tell it from the TV screen, but the rain is coming down pretty hard now. Even though the forecast was for it to back off starting at about 2 o'clock this afternoon, that has not been the case after all. So just one extra thing to add to the tension of an NCAA championship final. And Laura, you know, you talked about Courtney Wayman and how she has the fastest time, not only this year, but also just the personal best. She's dwarfing the rest of the field. So when you look at the competitors that came into this competition, six of the, six of the 12 competitors ran a season best or personal best. What do you think she needs to do to ensure that she's not caught up with the rest of the group when they come down in those last a couple laps? Stay poised, stay in contact, run her own race. She knows everyone else who is in this field and one of those to threaten for the title, you're seeing right up front, it is Kaylee McCabe of West Virginia in that heat alongside Maddie Borman of Colorado. And Kaylee McCabe was third at the NCAA East Regional Qualifier in Bloomington. She has a 932 personal best. So she is one of those who could threaten up front. And in talking to a few of the coaches, they said, oh yeah, Kaylee McCabe is a really tough, tenacious competitor. Just to contrast this race from the men's race, the only difference, same distance, but the hurdles and the barriers, I should say, and the water jump are 30 inches for the women. They're 36 inches for the men. That's the only difference. We continue to see Joyce Camelli leading over Courtney Weymouth. They were sort of sharing the leading duties up until about the last 100 meters. Now it's Camelli on the inside, Weymouth on the outside, staying out of trouble. It's extra important to not let this group bunch up not so much from a standpoint of only just you have to have room to run while you're on the track, but you also have to have room to hurdle and get over the water jump. A very dangerous event, highly technical event, along with the fact that it's 3,000 meters long. One Laura, thing, oh, ahead, say, Laura, no. Laura, do you think that, you know, you talk to the competitors and they say, listen, we get, you know, Jolly said, you get wet anyway, right? Your, your feet are wet and all that. But with the rain being out there and them having to run so many laps in that inside lane, is it going to make them feel like they're running with water boots on? <laughs> they do. Your, your spikes get a little bit heavy, but they're not near as heavy as when most of these athletes are running in cross country and you're running through the mud and the grass and the hills and all of those things. So these are athletes who are, are well battle tested in a multitude of situations. And they're very familiar with each other. A lot of those within this field were among the lead last year, actually. Wayman and Camelli were leading the race going into that final lap, into the bell lap, when Katie Rainsberger then took the lead and started to make a charge. It was Mahala Norris of Air Force who went with her and was able to absorb the lead of Wayman and Camelli. That last lap, Wayman in 2021 took a tumble, cut her foot over the water jump and was never able to compose herself. So both she and Joyce Camelli have learned greatly from that experience in terms of better positioning themselves and also being able to respond to be sure you have enough in your tank when someone th throws a big surge to the field like we saw in this event last year. Joyce Camelli's coach, Ralph Spry, calls her such a competitor. He said she actually has to pull back the reins with her a little bit. And you saw that in the championship last year because she so aggressively got out there and got up front then didn't have the closing kick which that she needed to finish the job. Meanwhile, live on the triple jump one runway, senior from Florida, Natricia Hooper. Her first attempt of the competition. You can see some of the early marks there on the left side of your screen. Marsh of Georgia with a 42 eight and a quarter. They're in the first three jumps, the, the preliminary, so they're utilizing both the pits. And they'll close that to nine competitors. You can see she's got a wrap on that knee, which is tough in the triple jump because you take a lot of, a lot of force on those knees in the event. So it's a foul for Hooper. So we return to the steeplechase, just under four laps remaining now, and Weymouth with a little bit of a breakaway. And the only one that has cut, really hasn't covered it, but has moved up is Kaylee DeLay of Yale. We saw the same thing happening in the semifinals the other day. Elise Thorner of New Mexico in third, currently Joyce Camelli back to fourth. And they're on collegiate record, meet record pace under 920 right now. Well, in talking to Diljeet Taylor, 
Courtney Wayman's coach at BYU. She said last year, that fourth place finish that you saw at the Olympic trials, she knew that the fitness was there. It was just that tactically, the race at the Olympic trials, much like the race here at the NCAA championship, she just wasn't strategic enough. So they didn't adjust her training that much, stuck with much of the same training over the last year, but they raced less frequently. She'd only raced one steeple before she went into the championship season to that NCAA preliminary meet. So she would have stronger legs and she would be able to be sharper in her race execution. And Kaylee DeLay is coming on really strong, but also you see Kaylee McCabe of West Virginia in that next pack behind her who has outstanding strength. Courtney Wayman really pushing the pace here. Less than three laps to go. We're at 920 pace now. She's probably got a 12 to 15 meter lead over Kaylee DeLay. And then DeLay is easily 20 to 25 meters ahead of that next group of four that has Kaylee McCabe, Elise Thorner, Madison Borman, and Alyssa Nigeman. You know, Laura, you talked about Logan Jolly, who ran extremely well in the semifinal. But right now, she seems to be falling behind a little bit. Is this more of the way that she likes to run, or do you think that there could be something going on with her? Well, I, she knows that she has the, the strength and the speed to be able to close out a race. I do expect her to move up uh, over the final few laps of this race because she was part of that Arkansas 4x1500 meter relay that broke the collegiate record at Penn Relays in late April. But right now, it is all Courtney Wayman who still Dwight looks incredibly relaxed. That qualifying race that she ran, she said her goal was to run really, really even because she overran in qualifying at this point last year. So she wanted to run evenly paced and that's what Diljeet Taylor wanted her to do in this race. Stay poised on the first half and then start to accelerate over the second half of the race, the back 1500 meters. 74 second lap for Wayman as she continues to increase her lead. Let's not minimize the fact that she lives and trains in Provo, Utah at altitude. Then you come down here basically to sea level in Oregon. That can't be, that can't be a disadvantage, certainly. So it is Wayman continuing to press the pace and lengthen her lead over Kaylee DeLay of Yale. And not much in the way of a, an attempt to close that gap from the group behind her, which is Kaylee McCabe and Madison Borman sort of together, and another five meters back is the rest of the field. Kaylee DeLay is on pace for a lifetime best. She's run 940-81 earlier this season. Not only was she the Ivy League steeplechase champion, she was also the Ivy League 5,000 meter champion, two-time Ivy League cross-country champion. Courtney Wayman taking the bell. She keeps up this pace and doesn't miss with a barrier of the water jump. She's gonna be well under the collegiate record, which, and the meet record, of course, 918-19 is what we're looking at for. The meet record would be 924-41 at this point from six years ago by Courtney Freericks. Courtney Wayman mentioned she drew a ton of motivation from that fourth place finish at the trial. She was the top collegian in that field, but Diljeet Taylor said, hey, sometimes you come in, like in the race last year at NCAAs, you come in with the top time, you come in favored, but that's not all, always how the race plays out. She's looking to finish the job here as she has been atop the steeplechase this outdoor season. One more barrier to go. 9-18-19 is the American leader just two weeks out from the national championship. She's definitely got a shot at that, which would absolutely obliterate the collegiate and meet record. And she has got a sprint going here down the finishing straight. This is a huge, huge performance for Courtney Wayman. 9.15.99, a breakthrough performance corrected to 9.16 flat. Kaylee DeLay of Yale, again, a big performance for her as well. And Kaylee McCabe may also have gotten under that world championship qualifier. We'll have to see when we get the final results. She just misses it, 9.31.14, but delay definitely under it, 9.25, a 15-second personal best for the Yale junior. Number five American all-time for Courtney Wayman. 
You see that on her back shoulder, the mantra of the BYU program, BYU run for her. And last year, Courtney Wayman saw her teammate, Anna Camp Bennett, won an, win an NCAA title. She saw that as motivation, knew she was capable of doing the same and wanted to earn her first NCAA outdoor title after collecting those indoor titles, 3K, 5K, DMR, now with an opportunity here to finally capture that steeplechase, steeplechase crown that she was seeking. Oh my gosh, guys, what a run by Courtney. She said, wait a minute, I'm the fastest in this race. None of you guys can go with me. And then at the end of it, you just see her throw up her arms and celebrate like championship. Well, aside from the annoyance of the rain coming down, the conditions from a standpoint of temperature are ideal. Low 60s, Courtney Wayman, 916 flat. She rewrites the record books at the collegiate level here at the NCAA Championships. Kaylee DeLay with a big personal best and well under the World Championship qualifier. And Kaylee McKay just missing that qualifier, but a personal best for her as well. And Courtney is downstairs with John. Uh, I am here with the champ, and there were 12 people in the final. You made it a race of one. Is that the plan all along? What was the strategy going out? Yeah, the plan was rely on my fitness and the... Um, all the things that I have done to get to this moment. And if anyone's gonna come with me, then I'll just put my foot on the gas a little bit more. So many things to like here. You get an outdoor championship, you get a collegiate record, a world, uh, a world championship qualifier, what else, a uh, fifth all time. Which of these is the favorite one of those if we're gonna start ranking them? Um, winning. Winning is the best one of all of them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in 2017, I had a really good freshman year, and I didn't do well at regionals, and my parents and I drove out here. We sat over in the stands over there, and I remember during the final, I just sobbed, because I wanted so badly to be on that track. So today was to inspire all the people or young women out there that were once me in 2017, saying, you can do it, and you just have to give yourself a shot. I'm not going to top that. I'm just going to say congratulations and throw it upstairs. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Go Cougs. Dwight? Yeah, John, it doesn't, it isn't said better than that. Winning is everything. You don't, it doesn't matter how high you jump, how far you throw, how fast you run. If you're the one that comes across the line first, 